There you go, another crack and roach in the five metre pole feeder. There you go, I've got an old school killer bait for roach. Stewed wheat. It's absolutely doing the business for the quality roach. I've just mixed it 50-50 with my hemp. It's got it mixed 50-50. Feeding pinch like that every time. It's absolutely mulling the roach. There you go guys, there's the proof. Nice piece of nice roach on a piece of wheat. Give it a go. Morning guys, how you all doing? Welcome back to the channel. I'm Nigel from the Norfolk Fishing Channel. And if you're new to the channel, welcome on board. Before we go, I just want to say massive thanks to all the new subscribers. Uh, plus 50 uh, subscribers last month, which is absolutely fantastic. So welcome on board. If you've got any uh, comments, drop them below. Um, anything you'd like to see, anything you'd like, want me to do, any questions, drop them below and I'll try and answer them as best as I can. Today I'm back out at uh, Coltshall on the common or the green. I think I'm pretty much in the same peg as I was last time. And I was going to do a bit of feeder fishing. Um, but I've been so busy at work this week. I've had a couple of double shifts and been working 14 hour days. And uh, I just didn't get time. So I wanted to rake a swim, but I've not had time. So what I was just thinking the other day, how could I go about feeder fishing it here with it being really patchy weed? And I thought, ah, you know what I haven't done for a long while, about five or six years, is the pole feeder. Um, I thought that'd be like perfect for here, absolutely ideal. I mean, there was some, when I last used it last, was probably, yeah, say about six years ago, on the River Yare down at Langley and all the rest of it, it was, it was quite deep. And when you get a flood tide and it's a nice steady pace on the inside, they've had some fantastic roach hauls and some big bream hauls on it. And I thought, well, it's time to dust off the old pole feeder tactics and give it another go. And I've got down here this morning, got down in nice and early, first light, that's taken a little bit of a while to set up because uh, I'm a little bit rusty with it and just getting everything bang on. But, um, I've got two lines, again, eight metre line and a five metre line, which is what I was fishing last time. And I'll run you through the rigs in a minute, but if, um, the eight metre line, I'm going to go for a little 20 gram cage feeder. And I'll show you that in a minute. And the inside line at five metres, I've just gone for a maggot feeder or with some hemp casters and maggots through it and I finally got everything ready and uh, I've just had the first cast and it's just resting in the water down here One second. let's get in it out of the water first cast it was in literally 30 seconds just get my disgorger Yeah, yesterday and uh, the day before, I was just going through the rigs and making some rigs up for it. And we've got two similar rigs that are slightly different, but uh, I'll show you that in a minute. Not nice, not a bad way to start the session, is it? A pristine roach. We'll get that in the net. What I did notice though, when I was sort of like plumbing up the depth, is a big jack pike came up down there. I'll just get that there and I'll quickly show you the baits today they've got 50-50 uh, green and brown crumb and uh, in here what I thought I'd do is, is put a lot more fish meal in it and also I had the crushed expanders which are milled down into a powder and a packet of really cheap no frills uh, digestive biscuits and this is crushed um, hemp in there coconut ground coriander it's quite a nice fine mix but that's very fine but quite fish mealy and sweet with some molasses and other bits and pieces in there i've also got a pint of predominantly white maggots with a few fluoros in there i'm trying a new bait today i've got um, a couple of pints of hemp and a couple of pints of stewed wheat 
which I used to use on the Witham and that for the roach. Python and a half of casters. I've got some dead squats in a bag so they don't go black. I've got a few worms. I didn't go mad on the worms, but uh, enough worms for a session. I've got a pint of uh, dead maggots here. I've got loads more beneath my box and a tin of corn. I've got low more ground bait down there. Five pound maxima main line. We've got the tip of a crystal waggler and I've got two rubber bands on there and that's just coming so it just sits out of the water just like so. That's just running down to this little fox feeder, little maggot feeder. What's up? 15 gram, so a nice light little feeder. There's a couple of little beads underneath and a stot, number eight stot, just above the hook link, which have got one of the Drennan quick change feeder links. There's about a foot and a half, 0.10 hook length, down to a size 18, cameras and B520 on there. I just started with two white maggots on the five metre line. I now fed the uh, eight metre line with four feeder fulls of dead squats, um, the hemp and wheat mix, casters, and a few dead maggots. Okay, it was just simply filling the feeder, pinch of casters. some of the hemp and wheat and a pinch of maggots it's a lovely white maggots these are just pushing the lid on and I'll swing around what I'm doing is I'm putting section 5 on I'm, I'm going to put a little clip on in a minute I'll show you I've got one here for the eight meter, but I'm going to put another one. I've got a section five, just swinging it out, drop it in, and then I'm going to push it out because I've shortened the line. I'm just watching the tip, and that goes. And we're on. Straight in. Only a little roach this time. But, uh, well, literally two put ins and two fish. And it's in seconds seconds so i'm going to do that again just going to fill the feeder i'm not going to spend too long on this but i've fed uh let's say four feeder falls of the ground bait on my eight meter line pinch of casters some of these lovely white maggots Just clicking that in. Just getting to the end of section five. Swinging it out as far as I can get it. And then pushing it out to section six, sitting forward. Just gonna pull that. There's a little ledge. Just gonna pull that back up so I can see the. That's it. It's like the bottom of a ledge there, and if I just come up, come up the ledge a couple of inches, it's just I can see that float there, and there it goes again, look, and it's gone. Oh. I probably won't quite swing it as far this time.
Let's get this rubbish off the hook. But it's a great method. And I thought, ah, oh, to get back into it and uh, I'm a little bit rusty with it. I won't put any bait in this time. I don't want to send them mad. I've got a marker. That's better, Cass. I don't want to go too far. Yeah, just push out slightly. I'm just heading directly in front of me. There's a little sort of like recess in the weeds over there. Oh, I just felt a fish there. Might have to tighten that elastic a little bit. You see the float just on the surface. And it's gone. Oh, it's just small fish, I can feel them. There's a definite indication there. The float just made those sort of like ring marks around it a couple of times. And again. You do have to give it a bit more of a strike when you... Because you've got a feeder on. And those maggots are chewed, I'll just give it one more go. I think it's easier actually with a six meter putting the feeder in and just lowering it down because that's bang on the bang on the mark then. I probably won't be as long to uh, swap over to the caster today. I'll tell you what, let's just get some more bait in. And get some fresh maggots on. Yeah, that one of the maggots is bent over the hook, so I'm gonna, just going to try a single maggot this time. Single white maggot. And again, just about eight or so bits of maggots. Pinch of wheat and hemp and... A, Pinch of casters. It's only a little feeder, but I'm filling it up. I think what we'll do this time is, is keep that high. I'll come out to my six meters. Find my spot on the far side, which is about there. Just lower that down. That's pretty much bob on. I have to pull that last sticker back in a minute. Took my eye off the float then, I was watching these people come down the river swimming. I 
hope we keep the mouth shut. All these river swimmers, they think they're doing great, but uh, healthy-wise, but taking a gob, gob full of this water, ain't going to be so healthy. I noticed that the other week when I uh, came back from here and had a big net of fish and put the net in the, in the car and getting it out and hanging it out, it bloody stunk. But not like a wet dog sort of smell, like crap smell. We'll go back on my original bit of a twist there, but I'm gonna lost the maggot as well. I thought there was a bite on there. The elastic I've got in this today is um eight uh yeah eight to eight to ten hollow so it's nice and stretchy. Okay, what I'm gonna do is just move that feeder up a touch. So it's a little bit further away. I'm not going to go far this time. Just, I'm going to hold my hand on section five. Just gonna, in front of me. That's more like it. I could just ever so slightly move that up the shell. What I might do when I bring this one in is I'll just put another inch on the depth, I think, or half an inch, just. Another nice little roach. There's something different in it. Something different. I'm just going to put, as I say, another half an inch on here. Too much. Oh, in again. Next cast. And a nice perch. He's in the net. Have a look at this fella. Just hooked in his top lip. I'm 
nice perch we'll get that in the net I'll put this rig down for now I can always loose feed this one by hand because it's only on five meters clip that on there I've got two section fours with me today so it makes things a lot easier um, let me just get this out of the way I've also bought oh, I've set up a copping kit if I need to let's get this out of the way there we go don't need that for the minute, so... I'm going to have to put a couple of extra sections on here, but... Uh... Let's pull this back up. Get myself sorted with this line, it's a little bit... Uh... I haven't put a... Uh... I haven't put a... Uh hook link on yet but this rig basically is um I'm start from the top I've got an old top kit an old top kit and a spliced in a quiver tip feeder tip okay we ain't really big I've got an old top kit and a spliced in a quiver tip it's a two ounce tip in there just over two and a quarter I've got a size 10 solid elastic down to a connector so I want a little bit to, a bit more grunt to it. And again, I've stepped up the main line. I've got eight pound Fox Warrior main line on there. And I'm doing this down, I'm using the uh, feeder as a plummet. So again, the float bristle just sits on the water. Yeah, I've got that running all the way down. I've got one of the really tight feeder stops above so I can move the hook link. I've got one of the Drenham quick change feeder attachments there. It's the black rubber sleeve just over a little hook. I've got the hook link which is about a foot and a half, uh, 0.10 and down to a standard size 12 hook. And I've got this more helicopter style rig so the feeder attachment on the bottom and then I can move this hook link up or down a little bit if I want. And it's going to go for really light sort of 10 to 15 gram cage feeder and what I'm doing is baiting the hook, baiting the feeder, I'm hooking that over, come down a bit, like so, pushing it out to where I want, turning it over anti-clockwise, that releases it and I can just drop it down. Otherwise you've got, you know, you're going to have your, your line all the way in the water and your, your feed will be emptying on the way out. So. I'm just going to have one quick cast so I can get my line again, where I was fishing. Just make sure I'm in the right place. So as I say, I'll be turning you around so you see what's going on. With this again, I'm shipping out to the end of six meter, turning this over, that comes off, we've got to keep it high.
and then just pushing it out to the seven metre line. That's about bang on. So check that depth. So as we, um, it's quite weird here, actually further out you go, it gets a bit shallower again. Okay, what I've got to do is, I was one section short, that's why I didn't want to start fishing. Just need to check my line. I've got to go to section seven and then push out to eight. This is why I didn't spray bait everywhere. I think I'm going to move this uh, feeder down a bit. pretty much all the way to the bottom. We'll start with a worm. If I don't get nothing on the worm, I'm going to quickly uh, change the hook link and go to a smaller hook. Yeah, I'm just going to push the... Just nip the head of the worm off. I'm just going to thread it down. Around the bend, up the shank. Pull that out nice like that. I'm just going to tip it with the tail end of a fluoro. And we'll fill this up. We'll press this in really tight because it's very dry actually. Well, it's dry enough to stay in the feeder. I'm going to put some uh, hemp and wheat through it. Cheapest chips, you can get it online dried, you just do exactly the same as hemp, soak it overnight or a day or so, I'll put some dead squats in it, dead maggots, casters, and a bit of hemp and wheat, I'm going to tip that over my, this is just like a removable cable tie on here, um, I'm not going to take it off, but uh, you get them. Yeah, it's just I've got a, like a removable cable tie. It's just twisted knot. I get them from work. They've all come on food bags and that frozen food bags. But I can get it, tip it in, move it to where I want. I hang that over like that. Just to Section 7, lift the pole up, turn that over, 
perfect. And I'll clip out the section 8. But what I'm going to do as well in a minute, I'm going to shorten. Turn you around. I'm going to shorten the line between the pole floating, the pole to the tip. Might have to put another section on, but I think I'll get a lot better presentation. I mean, you could if you want to, um, use your spray bar or rod rest and just plonk it in and, and sit in hands free then. Bouncing out, but I've had three absolutely cracking roach now. Yeah. I mean, that's the smallest one of the three. Okay, didn't have anything on worm, so I'm going to try a piece of corn. I'm going to try and keep the five metre line sticking over.
put in a pinch of uh, casters, dead maggots, dead squats and corn fruit. Okay, I've had nothing on the uh, eight meter line. Getting plenty of bites, but I just can't hit them for some reason. Just come straight back on the five meter line, and I've had three, three or four nice roach. It just seems to be a natural line for them. I'm going to try caster this time. Might even try a piece of wheat in a minute. Felt that one. It's straight. Ooh. That come off. A bit too soft with that one. I'm going to try a piece of wheat. Single grain of wheat like that. Sort of mix the fifty fifty for hemp. Start cutting back the maggots now. I might introduce a bit of sweet corn just, just by hand.
Yeah, this one. There you go, another crack and roach in a five meter pole feeder, single caster. I'm putting a caster on the hook now. Seems to be getting the better fish. Okay, guys, I'm trying a different bait today. I've got some uh, stewed wheat. Let's have soaked overnight. Just some plain water, well, for at least 24 hours. Left it in the fridge in a container. And then just brought it up to the boil, simmer it for 15, 20 minutes. You just want it sort of like al dente, just soft enough to hook. And I'm just hooking it through, you know, it's like a brown bit. And the roach, you're having it. I've been feeding it with my hemp, and they're really having it now. You get some really good roach on the wheat. I'll just swing you out. Another fantastic roach on the stewed wheat. Now I've got a four by tens float on, really light. They're down to a 0.8 hook link and the size 20 gamma katsu black. And I've got 50-50 wheat and hemp. I'm just getting a big bit of wheat. In fact, this has been on for a couple of fish now, but I'm just hooking it. There's like a brown bit on the other side. Just down through the middle and out. And the quality of the roach are just loving it, absolutely woofing it down. And I'm just, because it's so light, I've got number 10s all the way down the rig. I'm just flicking it over. A few casters, a few bits of hemp and wheat. I say the mix is like that 50 50, pretty much. And the, the float is just flying under. But I'm just sort of like um, waiting a second or two because it's such a light rig. It's only four by 12s. And it's got about six number 10s on there, all strung out equally down the rig. It's sort of like exaggerating all the bites because it's so light. Any, anything that's going to take it under. but I've lost two or three really good fish. When I strike, it's just gone solid, a big head shake and it's come loose, but it's probably because I've got a size 20 hook on. I see the flow start to pick up a little bit now. It's been static all morning. It's just starting to flow a little bit. And that's caught on some weed. No, it's not settled. I know there's some junk on the line. And the float as well. Again on the wheat, and another fantastic roach. 
but you can see when I'm striking where, I'm, where the fish is coming up because it's sort of falling through naturally through the water. I'll swing it. Messing around. Really good roach. Another cracking roach. Give it a go, guys. Go online, get some wheat. I'll get like three kilo packets. Get it off the bay. It's the cheapest chips. Get it from the agricultural stuff and or bird stuff, aviary stuff. Five quid for three kilos. You only need a quarter of a pint because it'll swell up to it'll double in size. So you just put it in ice cold water, don't put anything else in it, in a container, leave it in the fridge. Good 24 hours. Keep it in the water, put it on, bring it up to a simmer and just simmer it for 20 minutes. Off and refresh it. And repeat. I'm not feeding any maggots at all. I've stopped feeding maggots. Sometimes you can feed too many different things and just limit the choices. You can have a want it or not. You know, sometimes if it goes a bit iffy and you think the fish are drifting off, you can always introduce a few maggots just to spark the peg back into life and draw a few fish. But I'm just feeding casters, hemp and wheat and that's it. Occasional few bits of corn. You sometimes need to get that eye tuned in, you know. Get them tuned into the bait that you want them to be taking. I mean, again, it's just as many bites on caster tell you the truth but uh, the bigger fish are coming to the wheat and I've had a couple on sweet corn as well you just have to wait a little bit longer on the sweet corn yep, and there's a bite there Try that again. Yeah, a little bit of grass on the line, I think. But um, yeah, I used to use it back in the 90s, and it was great on the Witham and around Lincolnshire and that, where obviously there's a lot of wheat fields. And this time of year, when they start harvesting and all the wheat from the combine gets sprayed into the fields and stuff, and it used to be brilliant bait back then, and it's, it's working again today. Another roach to the wheat. Okay, guys, we've got an old school killer bait for roach, stewed wheat. It's absolutely doing the business for the quality roach. I've just mixed it 50 50 with my hemp. 
that's good at mix 50 50 and feeding a pinch like that every time it's absolutely muller in the roach just fishing five meters to hand that's not the best because i'm trying to hold my phone just whipping it over I can't feed because I'm holding my phone. And there we go, straight away. Oh, this one came off. I'm going to up the hook size in a minute because I'm only using... Uh, Gonna up the hook size in a minute because I'm only using size 20 and we're losing a few good ones. So I'm probably gonna go to step, step up to a size 16. Because we're using wheat is about the size of a tear. But it's really durable, it stays on for two or three fish. You only need about a quarter of a pint, half a pint. Here you go guys, there's the proof. Nice piece of, nice roach on a piece of wheat. Give it a go. Okay guys, I'm all done, I'm back home. Sorry, I couldn't get any pictures at the end there. Um, I decided not to go there again while it's so busy. There's just too many people behind you. Um, paddle boarding and you know ice cream van and all day long I, I wanted to go for a wee and I couldn't find anywhere there's no toilets there there's so many people um, no facilities and I was just holding it and then at the end I pulled my net and so many people came over again and I was speaking to a couple of lads they pulled up on the river there was in canoes doing a bit of jigging and spinning and whatever and he got he was wanting to do a bit of piking he said oh I can have a few liveies mate so I give him two or three for him and his mate, a couple of fish. And then there's a young couple turned up an hour before I was packing up. Um, a young lad and his girlfriend. She was trying to catch some roach and he was he was sort of like doing a bit of dead baiting. But he, he came running over, oh, could I have a couple of liveies, mate? And then a couple of people come over and I was like, oh, can I have a look at the fish? And I just thought, I could see the people to the right who had been piking all morning and he was walking over and I thought, oh, it's effort, you know, sod it. Just throw them back in, just put them straight back in the river. So, yeah, I put them back in the river. But, um, fantastic day, you know. At about 25 to 30 pound. And I, I did start off on the pole feeder. And I was getting bites. The 8 metre line just doesn't work there. Um, I need to plumb up again and I think go further. 10, 11, 12 metres, maybe 13 metres. Just find another line for whatever reason. The 8 metre line doesn't work there. You get very few fish. Um, the 5 metre line is brilliant. Um, went on there. And as I say, I, I had a 50-50 mix of hemp and stewed wheat. After half an hour, I cut the maggots out. Um, I was just getting roach, roach a chuck, roach a chuck. And strangely... The wheat overtook the casters. Um, in the end, I couldn't get a bite on caster, even though I was still introducing caster and hemp and wheat. Everything was coming on the wheat. They're absolutely going crazy for it. Absolutely going crazy for it. And decent roach as well. It's nice and firm. You can get three or four fish if you're lucky on, on, on one bit. Of, you know, it stays on. I think the ideal size would be 18. Um, I went to a 16, it was a bit big, went back down to an 18, that was about a bang on. Um, cameras in B530, the blue hook, perfect size. And it just nailed them every time, the bites were so clean. And put a caster on, you get a few little nibbles and knocks and all fast bites, sometimes you do with caster. Put the wheat on, the float just nicely sailed away. Um, again, some decent roach on sweet corn, but I didn't have many today. Um, you had to sit and wait three, four, five minutes for a bite, but the wheat just blew everything out of the water today. I'm really surprised. I went to, I took it last week with me, um, 
it would have did well. But I left it in my bag and I forgot to use it. So I should definitely be using it again. Um, yeah, old, old school bait. If anyone still uses wheat on the rivers, let me know. Um, I've not heard anyone use it. I mean, I know they used to use it in the 60s and 70s and early 80s and that. Um, around the Fens and on, on the Welland and on the Witham and that. Um, any, any Anywhere, really. It's River Steeping. Where you're in the middle of the country, there's lots of fields around you with barley, wheat and all the rest of it. And this time of year when they start cropping and they start harvesting and all that spills into the river. And all you've got to do is basically get a container, put twice or three times as much water as there is wheat. Uh, so it'll swell up a lot. Take it out, leave the cold water into a pan, slowly up to the boil, turn it down, simmer it, 15 to 18 minutes, take it straight off. You want a little bit of bite in the middle, just so you can get the hook through. Refresh it, and that's it. Give it a go. So uh, anyway, tight lines guys. Sorry they got no pictures at the end. But you've seen the video, the amount of fish I was catching, and the quality of them, and I had a few on picture with you know the hook and, and the wheat on there. So you know I caught them. You know I'm not you know, telling porkies. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Tight lines, and thank you again for all the new subscribers to the channel. And I'll see you again in another video. All the best for now. Cheerio.